Good morning. We're going to start the meeting today. I have an announcement to make <laughs> uh, before. Uh, the dinner of the Congress is going to be held this tonight, and it will be held in the hotel, uh, Willow, Gillow Hotel. Uh, the people that is uh, has room there won't have to pay, but everybody else will have to pay. So, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. According to the menu, as I understand. 7.30. <laughs> okay. Well, we start. We have today, uh, we are honored to have the Dr. Camilo Rios. He had, had his bachelor in chemistry in UNAM, and then uh, his PhD in pharmacy in the in Cibestap in Mexico City, and uh, uh, he's the head of the neurochemistry department in the National Institute of Neurology and Neurochirurgy. Uh, it's uh, something that doesn't seem to physics, new materials to regenerate spinal cord. But the, the, the main thing is that the, uh, among the collaborations that he has is with us, the Department of Physics of the Universidad Autónoma Metropolitana. So he, he interacts with uh, all, all kind of people, <laughs> even physicists. Okay, uh, uh, without more introduction, I will uh, allow you to let you, yes, over there, thank you. Good morning to everybody. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Juan Morales and Dr. Olayo for their kind invitation to this uh, meeting. It's a very prestigious and fine meeting, as I know. And uh, well, as uh, Dr. Olayo said, uh, I am uh, a little bit uh, far from uh, uh, physics, but also you are also you, you are also far from neural sciences. So I am going to try to make you uh, understand some uh, basic uh, issues on this uh, subject. Uh, particularly um, uh, subjects related to the regeneration of the central nervous system uh, as a first uh, stage in, my, in this talk. And then um, I am going to advance to uh, more recent uh, uh, developments in the field of uh, uh, spinal cord injury and how to repair uh, spinal cord uh, injury using uh, new materials, particularly uh, materials, uh, polymer uh, materials. So this is the numeralia about uh, spinal cord injury. As you know, even uh, Superman can uh, get a uh, injuries from the spinal cord. I, I'm, I'm talking about uh, the actor uh, Christopher Reeve who suffered uh, spinal cord trauma at the cervical uh, level. So uh, about 10,000 10, uh, new patients uh, are uh, injured every year only in USA. Uh, it uh, produces uh, uh, that uh, about 250,000 uh, uh, patients are in every time uh, suffering from the consequences of spinal cord injury. This is a very expensive uh, disease because uh, it affects uh, mostly 
uh, to patients between uh, 16 or 18 and 30 years old as uh, uh, the result of the activities of these young people, 55% of the patients uh, are coming from this age group. So they are uh, patients with uh, uh, all the life in front of them. Uh, they are uh, productive uh, young people. Uh, most, most of them uh, are uh, are men, and uh, nearly 40% of uh, patients uh, came from uh, car accidents. The uh, about 25% uh, of of those people uh, are uh, received this uh, spinal cord injury by uh, uh, violence acts and uh, the rest are uh, coming from sports and work accidents. This is, uh, can be variable uh, depend, depending on the different countries. You know, for example, in, in Canada, there, there is a lot of, uh, of accidents uh, by the uh, sports, by the snow sports or winter sports. Uh, and uh, they have uh, a, a higher proportion of, of uh, accidents uh, coming from sports. So, what happens if you receive a trauma uh, uh, in, for example, this level uh, of the of the neck? If you receive a, a strong trauma here you lose the function of, the, of this spinal cord, of this uh, neural, neural tissue, from this level to the bottom. So, if you receive a trauma in uh, the thorax, you will lose uh, uh, the function, their uh, nervous function, from this level and to the bottom. So, if, uh, in, as in the case of Christopher Reeve, uh, he received uh, trauma in the neck after uh, jumping uh, in a, with a horse. So, he was uh, paralyzed from all the four extremities because uh, uh, the trauma in, this, in that case was uh, in the upper level of the spinal cord. So, uh, uh, you can see here uh, that the problem is that the spinal cord is uh, like a tube uh, and if you cut by a trauma in the different levels, then the communication uh, between the brain and the rest of the body is interrupted. So, this is the main problem with spinal cord injury. Well, let's let's move about the basics uh, of spinal of uh, central nervous system, and I, I uh, wonder if you, uh, some of you perhaps know that uh, central nervous, uh, sorry, nervous system is divided uh, into central nervous system and per peripheral nervous system. So central nervous system is uh, composed by the brain or the encephalon, encephalon and uh, spinal cord. There are several differences, differences between the organization of central nervous system and per peripheral nervous system. One is uh, uh, the cellular components of these two different uh, parts of, the, of this uh, nervous system. Uh, in, in the case of the central nervous system, the, uh, uh, 
the cell that is responsible for the functions is, uh, of course, the neuron, as is, it is uh, the same in the peri peripheral nervous system. However, the difference is that uh, the myelination problem, uh, process, which is the uh, covering of these, uh, let's say, wires, from uh, brain into uh, that uh, come from the brain into the different organs is made by uh, a different uh, type of cell that is the oligodendrocyte cell. In the case of the peripheral nervous system, this is achieved uh, the, the same function, the covering of the axon of the prolongations of the neuron is uh, uh, done by uh, the Schwann cells. So this is a major difference between the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. And it's one of the main reasons because uh, uh, central nervous system is so difficult to repair. Because uh, in the case of uh, the cellu cellular components, uh, this oligodendrocytes is able to myelinate. Here's, uh, here's uh, a scheme of the neuron. So you can see how uh, it's composed, this uh, cell. So it's a soma uh, where it, it, it is located, the uh, nucleus of the cell. Uh, then a uh, very large uh, prolongation of these uh, cells named uh, axon. And this axon is covered by these uh, proteins that form uh, a sheet surrounding uh, the uh, axon. These sheets are made uh, uh, principally by uh, myelin. So the, the process, uh, the whole process of this is myelinization of the axon. So it is like an insulator for uh, the, the cell to conduct the electrical uh, current from the soma to the terminal here. So in the central nervous system, this uh, myelin sheet is produced by oligodendrocytes. One oligodendrocyte, one oligodendrocyte cell is able to myelinate many neurons. So if one of these uh, cells, these oligodendrocyte cells, is uh, destroyed or dead, then many of the neurons uh, are uh, affected uh, because they can lose their, uh, their, their myelin uh, sheet. So this is the case of the central nervous system. In the case of the peripheral nervous system, the relationship is uh, one to one. Uh, it means that a single uh, Schwann cell is able to myelinate a single axon. So if uh, one uh, Schwann cell is lost, then only one neuron is affected. In the case of the central nervous system, many of the cells are affected by this demyelinization process. So this is one of the uh, difference between peripheral nervous system and central nervous system. So what are the challenges uh, to repair central nervous system and uh, specifically spinal cord? Uh, well, uh, one is that central nervous system are unable to proliferate uh, in the adult life. So you can't uh, produce, uh, for example, uh, 
skin cells or uh, muscle cells uh, along uh, all your life. But in the case of the neurons, they are a uh, very limited capacity to replicate, to produce a new neuron, a new cell. So this is a problem with central nervous system neurons. They don't uh, proliferate. Second uh, problem is that uh, after spinal cord injury, there is a series of processes that inhibit the regeneration of the same cell. Because uh, there are some uh, markers, uh, cell uh, mar molecular markers, that indicate to the cell that it's, it is not needed to uh, regenerate the axon because it is an adult uh, subject. In the case of the developing uh, central nervous system, for example, a child of two years old, they have this, this uh, inhibitory, inhibitory uh, growth molecules down regulated because they are growing their central nervous systems. So this is stopped in the uh, adult uh, life. And then uh, when you receive a, a trauma in the spinal cord, this uh, grow in, in inhibitory molecules are uh, uh, going up to uh, stop any process to regenerate uh, the central nervous system. So what are uh, some other, uh, other problems? Uh, the imbalance, for example, in uh, neurotransmitters that uh, can even expand the lesion. The initial uh, volume of, of, leash of the lesion is relatively small, but after a series of auto-destructive processes, this uh, original lesion, the primary lesion due to the trauma, are expanded into different uh, uh, near, nearly uh, areas of the uh, spinal cord. So it's a, like a neurodegenerative process started by the, uh, uh, by the trauma. So this is uh, one of the uh, preparations uh, for uh, microscopy we use to evaluate uh, spinal cord injury and the uh, repair of spinal cord. Uh, I am going to give you a tip to understand these uh, uh, microphotographs. And it is all you see here in blue is neuronal uh, healthy tissue. So if you see blue, you are looking at uh, central, uh, central nervous system cells, I mean uh, neurons. and the blue color comes from the staining of the myelin of this sheet around the axon. So if you see here blue, you see healthy tissue. This is a rat, uh, a spinal cord from a rat. And you can see here how it's the uh, cytoarchitecture of this uh, spinal cord. In the right side, we can see uh, eight weeks after a single trauma to this spinal cord uh, of the rat. You can see here how most of the tissue of the uh, neurons are, are disappeared, have disappeared. So you see here a hole with no tissue. And many small uh, cysts here showing that the disappearance of the cells are coming from the epicenter of the lesion toward both sides of the spinal cord. So that is what happens with, the spine, with a moderate spinal cord trauma. So, 
What are those events that led uh, to a reduced ability of the uh, spinal cord to repair uh, uh, himself or itself? Uh, that uh, the main uh, processes that uh, take place after spinal cord injury are here uh, re represented in a time scale after injury. So injury is here at time zero. And then the several uh, post-traumatic events that led to uh, this uh, injury to be expanded. So in the acute phase, uh, namely uh, the first uh, hours after trauma uh, and the uh, uh, let's say two or three days after uh, trauma, you can see the uh, arrival from the blood, the arrival of several cells that uh, respond to uh, tissue damage in everywhere, in everywhere in the in the body. They are the inflammatory uh, response cells. They are, uh, their function is to uh, arrive to the site of the injury and to try to uh, uh, reduce the uh, quantity of cells uh, damaged. This is the, the rationale for this uh, inflammatory response to uh, reduce the amount of cells uh, damaged. Then, this is the acute fa phase. The oligodendrocyte is, uh, uh, cell is dead, uh, is going to, to death by different uh, processes. Uh, apoptosis or are are ne necrosis. And then, as oligodendrocytes are uh, lost, then the uh, demyelinization process takes place, as, as I explained in the previous uh, slides. So the initial uh, axonal uh, degeneration uh, takes place in this acute phase, and there are many local neurons that uh, go, going to, to, to be disappeared from the tissue. And then at the subacute, uh, let's say several weeks uh, to months after trauma, some other processes takes, uh, take place. Uh, for example, the glial scar formation. This is a scar in the central nervous system. The scar is formed mainly by these other cells, the, the glial cells. And then some other uh, distant processes of uh, neurodegeneration. That it, it means that the, the neurodegeneration is being expanded to the neighborhood uh, very rapidly, rapidly after the chronic uh, process. So this is uh, one of the main problems with uh, spinal cord uh, repair. If you look at the normal wound healing in, for example, skin or muscles, you see that this initial uh, phase, these are uh, different, uh, the different stages uh, in, uh, in time intervals I talked before. And uh, you can see here how the phase one, that uh, it's related to the inflammation uh, period is self-contained in the case of the normal wound healing, for example, as I, as I said, in skin or muscle. It is uh, uh, terminated after, uh, let's say, day four after injury. This is what uh, is happening in uh, wound healing in skin, for example. Then, after this uh, phase one of inflammation mediated by these cells, the uh, macrophages uh, cells uh, coming from, from the blood, 
uh, after this process is finished, then a second phase is taking place uh, from day uh, four, let's say, until uh, day 10, uh, approximately. And in this phase, there is a proliferation of the cells. From, uh, for example, in the case of the, of the skin, the formation of, new, uh, of a new skin. Uh, to cover the lesion. And then after this process is, is still taking place, then a phase three uh, starts, which is the remodeling of the tissue. Meaning that all these new cells are going to establish uh, patterns of uh, connection with the other cells, with the old cells that they uh, not wounded uh, cells. Then these three processes take place one after the other. But if, in the case of spinal cord injury, the healing process is completely different. Is uh, uh, for example the phase one meaning the inflammation process, is still present several months after spinal cord injury in the cells of the spinal cord. So this inflammation, this phase one, is never ending phase. Then delaying the phase two, because the uh, mediators of inflammation, the molecules that uh, call for, for these pr uh, processes uh, to continue, are still present for a, a very long time. And then phase two proliferation is uh, reduced because the presence of these phase one uh, mediators, molecules, and then it pra practically no phase three is taking place because uh, this inflammation prevents the occurrence of both proliferation phase and remodeling phase. So it is what means that it is very important to prevent these inflammation processes before you can uh, repair Sp spinal cord injury. So several strategies have been taking place to uh, start with a good uh, repair of the spinal cord. One is to uh, transplant cells to uh, initiate a new, uh, or uh, by the mean of grafts, uh, to prevent, uh, uh, I mean, to replace the cells uh, dead after trauma. But I am going right now to uh, be focused on uh, a different kind of strategy, and it is the use of uh, polymer or uh, material scaffold scaffolds to. Uh, induce the regeneration of the spinal cord. This uh, is a, uh, a very recent uh, paper published in neurosurgery with the first human implantation case for uh, a, pa a polymer sca sca scaffold for the treatment of acute spinal cord injury. This is a, a paper. Uh, published uh, this year by the group of uh, Dr. Uh, Theodore at uh, Phoenix University. He is uh, one of the uh, main researchers in the field of uh, spinal cord uh, trauma and repair. And he is uh, working at the Barrow Institute in uh, Phoenix. So they, what uh, they uh, did was to put this piece of polymer, it's a, a biodegradable material, meaning that it, it can be cut in small pieces, 
and these small pieces are being metabolized by the tissue it, uh, itself. So uh, this uh, kind of, uh, of uh, polylacticoglycolic acid, uh, which is conjugated with lysine, with polylysine, was uh, put here in the spinal cord of one patient. Uh, to induce uh, the repair of spinal cord. So this is uh, how the implant look, looks like. This is a, a coin uh, for you to, say, to see uh, how big or how small uh, is this uh, uh, implant. And then uh, if you look at the uh, oh, uh, microscopy, uh, electron micro microscopy, you can see that the uh, uh, structural appearance of the uh, polymer material is very, is a very porous material. A very porous material, and the, it was implanted here. The patient is uh, I improved their uh, walking after a spinal cord injury uh, in a very interesting and uh, promising uh, way because uh, he was uh, uh, with the Asia scale of A, uh, meaning that he couldn't move uh, their, uh, their legs and he couldn't uh, control the urination uh, process. And after uh, six months, he is uh, now working with the assistance of a, of a, uh, one uh, chair, uh, and uh, he is uh, now with a bit of control of uh, the bladder uh, function. So it's a promising uh, result. Uh, and uh, this is the first case. So we ha uh, have um, uh, we um, have been work working with this uh, parole derived material. It is uh, there are some reports in the literature showing that these materials, uh, par parole derived materials are uh, good for the interaction with neurons, increasing, increasing uh, proliferation of in cell culture uh, plates. This is a in in vitro experiments. In vivo, they reduce inflammatory gliosis around the implant, and they have good tolerance of the host tissue. There are some reports showing that these materials could be interesting for uh, use in uh, spinal cord injury. So we started this uh, study with this uh, material in uh, 2008. We published this paper in uh, Journal of Material Science, Materials in Medicine, uh, trying to uh, use this uh, polyparole derived material to uh, implant into the spinal cord of, uh, of rats after a, a, a lesion. So uh, these materials are uh, produced by a, a plasma uh, a reactor. They, uh, the monomer is introduced into this uh, chamber uh, to polymerize uh, to initiate the polymerization in, uh, by the uh, glowing discharges of uh, electricity and then uh, the uh, poly uh, pyrrole, uh, for example uh, the polypyrrole produced uh, in that way is recovered you can see here compared again uh, with the a coin, a Mexican coin, and you can see how uh, it uh, looks like this uh, material after being uh, compressed 
by uh, nine tons of pressure uh, to form a, a, a thin film of material. In, in this way, we were able to introduce this uh, small uh, film uh, into the spinal cord after transection. Transection is uh, a uh, surgery operation to the rat, uh, 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 which is uh, uh, which leads to the separation of uh, the spinal cord in two pieces by uh, a knife. So, here uh, is the material, and it, this is the molecule, the, the parole uh, molecule, and then when uh, it is a, a subject of uh, polymerization process, it forms uh, these kind of uh, structures uh, or even this other kind of structure, a more uh, cross-linked uh, polymer. And uh, of course, it was uh, characterized by uh, chemical composition. Uh, for example, the nitrogen and carbon uh, bonds uh, uh, and the uh, carbon-carbon bonds were uh, characterized by infrared spectroscopy. We also use uh, electron microscopy to see how uh, uh, they look at the uh, uh, nanoscale. And these are the materials uh, by, uh, studied by uh, electron uh, microscopy, uh, and you can see one of the polymers was this polyparol, it's uh, uh, this molecule, polyparol. This is a copolymer of uh, polyparol and um, polyethylene glycol. This is the structure, and this is uh, polyparol doped with iodine. Iodine is used here to dop the polyparol during the synthetic process of the polymer. So this is the electric uh, conductivity at different uh, moisture, uh, percent of moisture uh, in the uh, environment. And you can see these are uh, sievers per centimeter. And uh, you can see how it, uh, the conductivity de depends on the uh, moisture of uh, the relative moisture of the uh, measurement. And after uh, this uh, amount, 70% of moisture, the, uh, con the material became uh, very conductive. So we uh, implant, uh, we implanted this uh, material in the spinal cord of rats. Uh, these kind of rats are uh, long Evans uh, rats. They uh, receive a lesion at this level, in, uh, thoracic level nine, the, the ninth uh, vertebra of the spinal cord. And uh, they were uh, cut the entire spinal cord with the use of a knife, a, a surgical knife. So this is a model of complete transection of the spinal cord. This was uh, our first approach because we have the uh, thin film uh, and uh, we put this uh, thin film after this, uh, the perform of this uh, cut of the spinal cord. So several groups were formed, uh, a control group receiving only spinal cord injury, uh, a group with spinal cord injury and polyparol implant, a group 
with uh, spinal cord injury and polypyrrole uh, doped with uh, iodine and spinal cord injury and uh, the plus the implant of uh, polypyrrole and uh, polyethylene glycol copolymer. This is the tissue response of the implant. You can see here, this is uh, eight weeks after the lesion, after the transection of the spinal cord. You can see here the uh, spinal cord looks like a tube, as I said, and how the, in, the, in the site of the transection, the uh, spinal cord uh, have lo has lost almost all of the neuronal material. And you can see here the implant is, is a brownish material. And how this uh, implant is being uh, 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 let's say uh, incorporated by uh, neural tissue. So again, uh, as I uh, gave you the tip before, all in blue are neurons or uh, myelin. So you can see here, this is the polypyrrole uh, doped with iodine. You can see how, uh, how the uh, neuronal uh, material, the uh, myelin, is getting into, look like it's getting into the material, the polymer material. So even in some cases, the uh, blue uh, material, uh, meaning that ax the axons of the neurons are going along a fiber of the uh, polymer. Uh, for example, in this, in this case, there are several fibers here of the polymeric material and also several fibers uh, of uh, new, probably new prolongations of the, of the neural tissue. So, as I said, as I, as I said before, uh, mm, macrophages and uh, inflammatory response is one of the main uh, problems uh, to prevent spinal cord uh, injury repair. And in this uh, microphotograph, you can see uh, an, a specific uh, marker for macrophages. The, the marker for macrophages, macrophages are uh, inflammatory cells that infiltrate uh, neural tissue from the blood. And uh, you can see the mark for uh, macrophages in brown. And again, the, the myelin is uh, stained in, in blue. So this is the control rat eight weeks after, after trauma, after spinal cord uh, lesion. And you see a lot of or uh, brown material, meaning that there is a lot of macrophages even eight weeks after uh, spinal cord uh, injury. And when uh, polypyrrole is implanted in the uh, spinal cord, you can see also some brown uh, material, meaning uh, there are still macrophages, but there is a lot of blue in between, you can see here, meaning that this is healthy tissue, tissue that has not been infiltrated by macrophages. So we, after this ex experiment, we, suspect, we suspected that uh, polypyrrole is being anti-inflammatory to the tissue. So if you remember uh, how the repair process is uh, working, 
So we are acting on the inflammatory phase one uh, process with this polymer. So we evaluated how, how good the uh, uh, motor uh, behavior of the rats is uh, being done after the uh, transaction. And we use, uh, f to evaluate this, we use uh, this uh, scale, the BBB scale. Uh, this scale uh, is uh, rating the rat motor activity of the uh, posterior uh, legs, or posterior limbs, uh, as zero in the absence of movement, like this uh, rat here and 21 to the normal walking of a rat, the coordinated movement of the limbs. And you can see here how uh, the recovery of the rat uh, occurs after spinal cord transection. This is a zero, remember, is no movement, and 21 up there is uh, uh, full recovery. And you can see here how after eight weeks, rats recover very little, about uh, nearly two points in this scale. But in the case of the polypyrrole uh, doped with iodine, the rats became very success successful in recovering the walking by eight weeks until uh, almost the double of uh, the recovery of uh, control rats. So this is a, a measurement uh, of a spare uh, spinal cord tissue, meaning uh, that uh, this is the percentage of tissue that remains healthy after eight weeks of uh, the spinal cord injury. And you uh, can see here the control, about uh, 10, uh, 12 uh, percent of uh, their, 100 uh, percent is the, the tissue from a control rat uh, without uh, spinal cord injury. And you can see almost the double or even more of the tissue is recovered by polypyrrole doped with iodine and also with the copolymer polypyrrole uh, polyethylene glycol. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Okay. However, uh, this is a very artificial or artifactual uh, model for spinal cord injury because. Uh, very few patients receive a transection, a complete transection of spinal cord. M uh, most of them receive a, a, a contusion uh, in the spinal cord. So we move to a different model of a spinal cord uh, injury. This is achieved by uh, uh, a weight, uh, small uh, metal weight that is being uh, released di directly into uh, the spinal cord. This produces a trauma that is very uh, well controlled because it, it, it is uh, connected to uh, uh, computer systems that uh, re uh, make the record for the speed and the deformation of the spinal cord after this uh, trauma. So, in this model, of course, there is no separation between the two extremes of from, from the uh, two extremes of the spinal cord, uh, as for example in the transaction model. So, you need to inject the polymer particles with a, with a syringe directly into the spinal cord injury epicenter. So that's what we, we did. This uh, paper is 
uh, now in press in the Spine Journal, one of the uh, major journals in the spinal cord uh, uh, science. And <clears throat> this is the kind of material we injected, uh, are particles, uh, small particles of uh, uh, maybe 100 uh, nanometers, 200 maybe, 200 nanometers uh, of diameter. And this, this is an, uh, how these particles look like after being injected into tissue. Again, the uh, blue color are the different uh, uh, myelin uh, axon, myelin nascent axons, and the brownish material is the polymer particles. So you can see how most of the particles are surrounded by healthy uh, neuronal tissue. Again, this is uh, also eight weeks after the injection of uh, the material. So this is the infrared spectrum of the uh, particles. And for the evaluation of the uh, success of this uh, injection, we use uh, nuclear magnetic resonance images uh, in a commercial three Tesla uh, uh, equipment uh, from our hospital. And we were able to locate uh, with the, uh, these images the site of the lesion. This is the control rat. Uh, receiving no particles of the polymer. And you can see here uh, in the lower uh, lane the uh, images from uh, several rats with uh, receiving the trauma. And then uh, 48 hours later, the injection of the uh, spinal cord, uh, uh, sorry, the polymer particles. So in this case, we were able to measure the uh, two physical uh, parameters that are uh, available in the nuclear magnetic resonance images, and they are the apparent diffusion coefficient and the fractional anisotropy. They uh, are uh, measurements or uh, uh, values that uh, give us information about how the order of the uh, spinal cord is being uh, in, the, uh, in the tissue. Uh, for example, in the case of the fractional anisotropy, uh, a fraction and isotropy close to one indicate that uh, water, sorry, water molecules are uh, moving preferentially in one direction. And uh, in the case of this uh, fractional anisotropy, zero means that there is a movement uh, in a sphere showing no preference for any direction. So this is uh, after, uh, before the spinal cord injury and then after the spinal cord injury. You can see here how after uh, several uh, weeks, after several weeks uh, of, uh, of the spinal cord injury, rats receiving the, uh, the polymer uh, particles recover better this uh, uh, fractional anisotropy. In the case of uh, apparent diffusion coefficient, it's uh, the, uh, opposite uh, as in the case of uh, fractional anisotropy. But again, we found a better uh, performance in these parameters with, uh, in the animals implanted. This is, uh, these are uh, how 
these uh, two parameters uh, measured by uh, nuclear magnetic resonance images are correlated with the uh, motor scale, for example, and with the amount of tissue measured, uh, spare tissue measured by uh, histology. Uh, by histology, sorry. And we also have uh, started with experiments with monkeys to, as a previous step to go to the human beings. And this is an experiment with uh, rhesus monkeys. In, they uh, receive a transection uh, lesion and then the, uh, the injection of, of particles uh, uh, sorry, no, this was a, a thin film uh, implant. And what uh, we uh, s uh, observed was that uh, in the case of the control monkey, he uh, received no implant, and the uh, fractional an anisotropy is going down, meaning that the water can move in every direction, direction without a preference. But in the case of uh, the uh, monkey implanted with poly polymer, they, uh, this is the, the value before lesion, and then goes down to this value. But then, after one and two and uh, one week, one month, and two months, the values of, uh, of this uh, parameter going up uh, as uh, in, in, on the contrary in the control went down. So this is the image. The left hand uh, image is uh, at the moment of the transaction. You can see here how it's uh, the cut of the spinal cord. And two months after that lesion, you can see that even more uh, space between the two uh, endings of the spinal cord. But in the case of uh, the monkey implanted with the polymer, you can see here one day uh, after uh, the lesion, you can see the separation. But two months after the lesion, you can see here as uh, some kind of bridge between this extreme of the uh, uh, of the spinal cord and the other, so and you can see here how some material, uh, some uh, uh, spinal cord uh, tissue is being lost after the in the in the control animal after the spinal cord injury, but you can you can't see this effect in the implanted uh, monkey. So, in these uh, two monkeys, we were able to measure the inflammatory uh, messengers in blood uh, to test uh, the hypothesis that uh, this material can be anti-inflammatory. And what we found was that all of the inflammatory uh, markers, for example, interleukin-2, interleukin-6, uh, tumoral, tumoral necro necrosis factor alpha uh, and some others, all of them are being decreased 24 hours after implant. This is the control uh, monkey and this is the uh, monkey uh, uh, implanted with the polymer and you can see how all in all the markers, and at all times, there is a decrease in the inflammatory response in blood or in the blood of these uh, monkeys. You can see in black, it, it is uh, the, the values of the control uh, monkey. So, thank you very much. We have time for one or two questions. Yes, please. 
what happens if the injury doesn't affect all the cross section of the spinal cord, but just a small piece, an edge or something? Do you lose motion partially, or what happens with the patient? Yeah. Uh, well, you can, even with the uh, severe uh, lesion, you can still move partially some uh, of your of your limbs. Uh, uh, meaning that uh, the lesion needs uh, to be very severe to lost uh, every of your functions. But, uh, uh, for example, the walking is a very difficult, difficult function uh, because it relays on many muscles in the legs. So. It, as it is a difficult, uh, complex uh, process, walking, so you need uh, a lot of uh, innervation of, from uh, spinal cord to the muscles to move. So it's the complexity of the movement, what is the problem. So you, you can still move some of the, of, of the muscles, but you need coordination of the different muscles to move. Very nice talk. Um, Thank quick, you. Quick question about, I guess, the transection experiments and the role of the PEG in the uh, polyperol uh, particles. Have you tried either using just PEG as a thin film, or what is, I guess, the difference in, in the role of the PEG versus the iodine-doped uh, uh, particles? As, as I said, uh, most of the lesions in human beings are uh, due to trauma, meaning that uh, transaction is not a good model for uh, what is happening with the human beings. So we, uh, after doing several experiments with transaction uh, model, we move to the uh, trauma uh, uh, mo uh, model. So, uh, in the case of the uh, trauma, uh, you have a little space in the uh, spinal cord to receive a, a thin film, because you have to open again and remove all the material after the spinal cord uh, transection, and then even cut again. <laughs> to implant the thin film. So it, it, is, a, it, it is a matter of uh, how difficult it, is, it could be this to translate into human beings. Uh, that's why we moved to the uh, trauma model. Yes. In the case of the rats, you introduced a scale f f extending from zero to 20 somewhat to characterize the abilities to move. How can you, how can you determine these values in a controlled way. So then, uh, you are asking about how we measure the recovery of the rats? E exactly. The so you introduce yeah. a scale. And, and it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a scoring. It's a scale. It's uh, uh, dependent on the observer. But the, uh, for example, zero means no movement. Yeah. One. Uh, of this scale uh, means uh, that the rat can uh, uh, move a, a little bit the one of the legs, and two, it, it means that can move both uh, small uh, uh, displacements of, uh, of both uh, um, limbs, mm -hmm. and so on. So if you got a coordinated walk, then you have maybe uh, 15 in the scale. So it's an improvement scaling. Sure, but you just look onto the rats and determine the value, or is there some, uh, you, are, you are just looking onto the rats. Look on the rats and then you determine the scale, or is there an, maybe an objective measurement by some apparatus to determine it? No, uh, it's a visual uh, observation, yeah. and we can uh, record with the camera. And, and does the observer know whether it is a control rat or not? No, no, no.
to answer that. Uh, the, you have a you have observer and and uh, and you score the rat according to the movement, mm -hmm. and uh, the the observer doesn't know which rat is oh, which. It's one. a blind. So it's, it's a blind. A blind. A blind, a blind, a blind, blind observation. Design. And uh, so the the after they score it. Mm -hmm. They they know uh, after I mean they scored them for two months mm -hmm. and then uh, the average are, are are taken afterwards. Yeah, uh, it's a blind uh, design, so uh, uh, the observer is not aware about the treatments. I think this is very essential for such. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. In every case, we we take that uh, care uh, to prevent. Uh, Even most of the time, uh, there are three scorers. Mm -hmm. So different people see them so yeah. in order to, to, to be sure of what you see. Anyhow, you are not allowed to convoke them. So if they don't want to walk that day, it's a zero, <laughs> and you have to put it there. OK. OK. In this situation, is there a biological function for inflammation, or is, this, is it something that we can get rid of no, no, without no. any bad consequence? Or no, inflammation is a, is a physiologic, physiopathological response, so it, it, it gets an important function for the body. And the function is to uh, um, isolate the damage into a very uh, limited space in order to prevent the expansion of the, of the damage. So this is the normal uh, idea of this yeah. inflammation. But in the case of, of uh, central nervous system, the problem is that the inflammation is occurring within uh, several walls of bone. You know, the, the bones are uh, surrounding all uh, central nervous system. So inflammations. Uh, uh, can even damage more than the initial damage, the primary uh, lesion. What, what, what kind of lesion did the patient uh, was it that was, uh, there? Trauma. Uh -huh. Yes, what kind of lesion uh, had this, kind, this patient? Uh, as uh, as far as I read the paper, because it's uh, very recent, uh, it, it was a uh, car accident, a car accident, and it then a uh, displacement uh -huh. of uh, of the vertebra. Okay. So it's a compression lesion. And compression. The results, and the results. What and the results seems uh, to be good, but. It, it is still just one patient. Okay. We thank uh, Professor. Uh, thank you. You <laughs> <laughs>